Why do my red colors look so weird? Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 55. You have a little less than one week left to join the black and white photo assignment on a Cazillion's forum. Photos must be posted by this Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Make sure that they're a recently taken photo since I put this assignment out, not one that you took like two years ago. It has to be a new one. That's a point of the assignments. Don't forget about that. Two new medium format releases this week, both with 50 megapixel CMOS sensors. Uh, first was from Hasselblad, the second was from Phase 1. Yay! Fuji also released a new XL1 DSLR with an 18, sorry, 16 megapixel APS-C sensor, 8 frames per second shooting, and a built-in Wi-Fi. Eh. Nikon released a new firmware for the D5200, D50, sorry, D53, sorry, did it again <laughs> for the DF. D5200 and D3200. Let's try that again. Yay! <laughs> you know, I'm always uh, pushing you to make sure you have multiple backups of all of your photos. Yay! Backblaze put this post that uh, detailed and the expected drive lifetime and reliability of Hitachi, Western Digital, and Seagate drives. The, high, the Hitachi drives fared the best with Seagate failing miserably. Personally, I've used Western Digital drives for years. I've only had one or two of them fail on me over the years. But if you want to play the odds, go with Hitachi drives for your photo backups. Yay! Now, Scott Kelby put out a video talking about his switch to Canon. After, switching, after watching the video, it seems it just all came down to one thing and that Canon paid him to switch with the sponsorship. There's nothing wrong with switching brands. If you want to switch, that's just fine. Just don't try to hide your explanation of why you switched behind an ad for that company. Boo! JPEG Standard is also getting an upgrade uh, to support 12-bit color depth and lossless compression. I have a feeling this is going to be another kind of those who cares update, just like JPEG 2000 was back in 2001. Uh, personally, I'm pretty happy with my current workflow. I shoot in RAW, edit in a PSD file, uh, a PSD file if I needed to take it in Photoshop, 16-bit uh, Pro Photo, uh, RGB is the color space that I use, and then take that back in the Lightroom, then print from Lightroom or export to a JPEG for the web or external printing services, then, then of course the JPEG sizes are going to be different. I just don't see the point of why you would want to add another layer of complexity to your workflow. So, uh, point is, don't jump on a bandwagon of anything like this too early. You might see that your uh, work gets stuck inside of an obsolete image type and you can't do anything about it. You can't get out of it. So, boo! Coming up later on the show, I'm going to be talking about uh, posting photos to your website and photo galleries. Uh, Jared Poland put up this post talking about adding a bit of JavaScript code to your website that disables right-click menus. This is a technique used many years ago, which uh, fortunately has all but stopped. I've seen very, very few sites using this anymore. Please don't use this technique or try to keep people from stealing your photos to try to keep them. It's just not a good idea. Uh, it's already on the computer if it, in the browser's cache. Plus, taking a screenshot is so easy nowadays. You know, two buttons on your phone or your iPad. Um, you know, there's a snipping tool in the Windows. So it's super easy to do. Um, so just don't do it. It's just not worth it. Boo! Lastly, I wanted to mention this post by Rick Floor. I hope I said that, Rick, about personalizing the look of Lightroom. He shows you all the places you can add your logo uh, or name to Lightroom when using it to show your images to your clients. Yay! Next, gazillion questions. Yay! I'm new to this RAW. Why don't my pics just show up in my files? The are just a pic of a camera and I cannot upload the photo to Flickr or Facebook. Do I need to compress them? Help. I really need want to share these new looks. 
I have done in raw. Please, can you help this girl out? Hi, Kelly. I'd love to help you out. It's actually really simple. Um, the first part of your question was, why don't my pics show up in my files? You're probably using uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8, so you probably need to update your uh, raw codec. And uh, you can just do a search for your operating system, so Windows 7 raw codec, and uh, then maybe your camera type and see if it's supported. You can download and easily install that on your computer. Then you'll be able to see your images in the Windows Explorer, and so you can you know, see the individual thumbnails instead of just like a little camera icon that's uh, there in its place. Um, the next part of your question um, is you can't upload them to Flickr or Facebook. As I talked about a few minutes ago in my workflow, I, first I will import them into Lightroom and then do a little editing and then export them to a JPEG file. That's what you need to do. RAW is a file of type of file that captures all the data in the picture then you need to export that into something else in order to properly display that you wouldn't want to put your whole raw file up there they're way too big there's too much data you want to be able to edit it and control the way it looks like and the way it displays so export them as jpegs either through photoshop or through uh, picasa if you want a free program or iphoto if you're on the mac um, Lightroom, of course, Photoshop, uh, Adobe Camera Raw, there's tons of different ways to do that, but you want to still continue getting shooting raw. Don't get frustrated, work through this, and you'll get your own workflow. Speaking of workflow, you can check out uh, this post to show you more about my Lightroom workflow. Why is it that sometimes I take a picture, everything looks good, but red color looks unnatural and oversaturated? That's probably because it is un oversaturated, would be my guess. So what I would do is uh, take one of your pictures, the original file, rename it back to the original name, put it back in the camera on one of your memory cards, and look at the actual uh, histogram in the camera. I'm going to guess and say that it's probably oversaturated. You have too many reds in there, and so you're kind of hitting the top end of what the camera sensor can handle. The best way to do this is to change your exposure. You're going to need to underexpose a little bit. And um, the best thing to do, if you, this happens to you a lot, if one of your colors is oversaturated, looks weird, or something wrong, uh, it's probably an oversaturation issue, or I shouldn't say oversaturated. I should just say that your sensor can't handle all the data that's there. So what you need to do is go back and turn on the, the three color, the RGB, histogram. Check out that histogram. Look at the histogram on those images, either from old images that you've already shot, that you've definitely seen the problem. And then so you can quickly see, are my reds oversaturated, my blues, or my greens? And so if there's a real high spike in one of those colors, that means you have a lot of saturation, you have a lot of color in that luminosity range. And so you might need to underexpose a little bit to bring that back down. Then once that's done, you have a good image, then you can go and you can adjust it in Lightroom, in Photoshop, whatever your editing program is, in order to get a really good final image and so that you don't, you're basically not clipping that data, you're not losing that data. Uh, back to the thing that I was talking about with uh, the question from, from Kelly, that's another really good reason to keep on shooting raw. If you're shooting in a JPEG file, you will easily be hitting that and you will easily be throwing away a ton of data. So make sure you keep shooting raw, just work your way through it. But uh, for Scott, I think it was, Scott, make sure that you are um, checking your histogram in the RGB mode and you should uh, then adjust your exposure to make sure that all the data is fitting inside of that, uh, whatever your, your sensor can handle. Let's talk about photo galleries on your website. For the most part, your primary portfolio gallery should be short and to the point, uh, showing no more than 20 images in a set. Then if they want to go see more, give them a link to a secondary set or other groups of images that say maybe over they have all kinds of details or flowers or whatever it is, but then have your primary like 20 images as the one that you're showing right there on the page. Uh, photo gallery should be easy to navigate and uh, display properly on all devices. That means only showing a flash-based gallery to a desktop user and uh, showing a JavaScript-based or an HTML5-based 
gallery to everyone else, especially somebody on a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet, something like that, they're not going to have flash. So most photo galleries will have thumbnails, then you can view a larger image, um, or sometimes you just have the larger images only. Um, with only large images, you will usually scroll through them. You just, you know, scroll through either on the, the tablet with your finger or with on the mouse. You can scroll through the page. Uh, or you can just add them to your website and just let the user scroll. Um, you know, that works fine too. There's nothing wrong with just push, putting a bunch of images top to bottom, let the user scroll down through them instead of having them uh, moving. If you did want that motion, um, or if you want the images to automatically scroll or change or fade in and out, you'll need to find some kind of a suitable JavaScript or HTML5 slideshow. There are tons of them on the web. Just do a Google search and find the one you like the best. Uh, many photographers don't have the skills to work with the code, so an easy option just to use the built-in galleries from Lightroom and Photoshop. They work great, easy to add to your website. You can also find uh, easy to use instructions on how to put them up. So just do a little Google searching and uh, you'll be able to get the, hit the ground running pretty quickly and get them working for you. Another option for you to use is, a, is a Flickr. Their new iframe embed code allows you to use uh, the user to click to the next image. Uh, although they're only when you mouse over it are you prompted to do that and see the next image. Then if you're using a, uh, a smartphone or a tablet or something like that, you don't have that hover state. You know, you, you don't automatically, you won't be hovering your mouse over that, so you won't be able to see it. Another drawback of Flickr, they do have an automatic slideshow option, but it's only flash based, which means it's only going to work on your desktop and not on mobile devices. Uh, if you have a lot of images that you want to add to your website, especially if you want to be selling them, check out a product called Gallery 3. It's a great application, it allows purchasing of images right on your website. Um, one more thing, as I come across scripts that, I, that, that show photos well, I will keep on posting them. If you do have any questions, please let me know. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks guys. Keep shooting.